Why don't you, we even have your chair, you see, okay. your director's chair. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, a pleasure for me as the dean of this school to welcome Gene Kelly to the Meadows School of the Arts and to SMU. As I said to him, I don't have to say anything about such a distinguished career. All of us here know all that he's done over so many years, but one of the reasons I'm so delighted you're here is that throughout your career, you have always exemplified a commitment and a dedication to producing to the limit of one's ability to trying to accomplish those things that will bring a talent to full fruition. And that standard that you've always held will be an inspiration for our students. And I just want to thank you on behalf of everyone in the school for being with us and for sharing these days in the Meadows School. And it's my pleasure to introduce Gene Kelly. Thank you. Can you stand? Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed, not only the turnout, but the, all the microphones and so forth. I'm, I'm, uh, this is sort of a coming back to a lot of family, me coming back to SMU. I, I believe, if the dates are correct, my first uh, time here was in 1974, and I did an oral history for the history department. And then, but the last time, when I came, we uh, had a very black tie party and ran a film and had questions and answers. And it was in the evening. And then in the afternoon, I visited classes. But it was quite informal. And now I've been sent. Uh, I saw last night when I got in on the plane, Gene Kelly in residence. And uh, so I, I, I better mind my P's and Q's. <laughs> the, um, uh, the groups here have been very good in the past. I uh, see the students are changing. I don't see any old faces, a lot of new ones there. And uh, I always have fun here. I come in with no specific diatribes or anything to tell them. But I come in to try to let them know what they want to know, and what they, uh, not just what they want to hear. I'm pretty tough at that. So I think it'll be a good three, four days and then on Sunday, I understand the public's coming in, and we'll have a question and answer session with them, and maybe I'll have Mike come up and says, we'll see. Now, uh, let's have a question and answer session now. Who has a question? Mr. Kelly? Yes, dear. With fewer movie musicals and with fewer opportunities for variety shows on television, what kinds of opportunities can you offer or can you encourage young dancers for today? The, the best, best thing for young dancers to do is, is what, what I did when I was a young dancer, is to, to try to go to the centers of where the talent pools are located. In our days, they're beginning to disseminate more, but they're still in New York and Los Angeles. I went from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Broadway and started out in the theater. And then from Broadway, eventually, I went to Los Angeles. The opportunities for young people today and young dancers uh, lie more in television than they do anywhere else. It's so expensive to do a Broadway show. It's so expensive to do uh, a film that's a musical. I'm working on two right now and have been working for a year and a half. And I think I'm going to get them both off the ground. But in between, I'm, I've been more or less on the lecture circuit trying to make my bread and butter. And um, I have scripts set me. I was just telling Dean Bonelli this a few minutes ago. Every month that I, I don't want to do, they're uh, very, well, they're juvenile and uh, have no interest for me. The um, Musical scripts come few and far between, and the ones that are sent to me, frankly, aren't that good. They're not that good. It's, it, it may be a forgotten art, and as music changes, dance will follow. And the music we have now is that the contemporary music is, uh, lacks romance. It's very hard to say I love you with a boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Very hard. Okay. 
anything else. Yes? You said you're working on two films right now, and what capacity? I'm, I'm, I'm working on them. I, I own the idea, it's all in my head. I'm writing, and uh, both of them, unfortunately, depend on just a few people who can do them. And um, that's the drawback. In other words, I can't let them out to studios and say, that, here they are, just do with them what you like. I have to keep control of them. And I can't even talk about them, because if you do, they'll be on television in three months. <laughs> which, which is not my problem alone. It's every movie you make is problem. And that, this is not uh, derogating television. It's a, it's a backhanded admiration. Boy, they get it on fast. They hear an idea, and the, the film writers especially, and they'll, they'll all tell you this. They're, they uh, have big troubles with it. They have to practically write out of the table and bootleg their stuff to their agents. Anything else? Yes? You were from an Amarillo TV station, the birthplace of the two ladies, Pinkley, I think, turning the Sid Cherise by the time she caught up with you. Can you do a little, tell us what it was like working with her, Brad and her eventually? Uh, brag on centuries? Yeah. Well, that's very easy to do, but I think the best thing to do is just go and watch her in the film. We'll, we'll be running for the dance class as a, a part of the centuries and myself, and uh, the influence of classical dance, which certainly shows through in those, and then uh, running another piece of film where there's no classical dance connected at all, which, which is a uh, kind of bastardized tap dance. The, uh, but uh, Sid Charisse doesn't need, even need to brag about herself. Her, her work speaks for it. She's a lovely, lovely dancer and a, a beautiful woman. Yes. Yes. Did you see the, um, the recent stage, stage version of Gone with, uh, Gone with the Wind? The scene in the rain? I did not see the it in this country. I saw it in London. It was too expensive for me to get on a plane, go to New York, and when it came to LA, I wasn't there. I was, I was abroad. The um, I did see it in London, and um, it was a it was a simulacra. It was a copy of, of the uh, movie, and uh, the audience uh, loved it. And uh, I must say, and the theater was jammed, and they laughed in all the right places. Uh, some of the gags were changed, I imagine, for. The, English audiences. Critically, it didn't fare well in, in London as far as the critics go, but the audiences were crazy about it. I understand that happened in New York too, and on the road here, but I did not see it here. It was a whole different production, as I'm sure you know. Yes? Yes, the colorization, the colorization process, uh, it, it was done completely wrong. I, instead of going and ruining some great classics to get it on, and uh, I understand with a little bit of hindsight now they need the money. They, uh, to put it very baldly and bluntly, that's, that's what it was. But they hit the talk about Maltese Balkan and, and Citizen Kane and hit those with color. You know, for directors and writers, actors who have done that. That's really a sin. Some films can, can stand colorization will be good. If you see some musical sequences, which I have caught on things that they're going to do, they, they were approved. I think they, they hit the public with the wrong thing. They create a lot of ill will, especially with the talent groups. And that's a shame, because what I understand is that they're improving it all the time. But let's face it, there's some pictures should never be touched. They should never, never, never be touched. And there is some validation to what Scorsese said about putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. There is some validation to that. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind giving your opinion on who you think will win the Academy Award? I have no idea. Actually, we members of the Academy aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> and a lot of people do it, and I don't understand why they have Morally, they're so reprehensible, but we're not supposed to do that. It says on your application, everything, do not give your opinion on it, and I won't. The, uh, anyway, I don't know who's going to win. It's like telling you the number for the lottery. When you were doing Singing in the Rain, did you think it was going to be a classical? 
No, I, I, I thought American in Paris would outlive Singing in the Rain, and, and uh, because American in Paris just swept uh, the world commercially and aesthetically in all, in all phases, and Singing in the Rain did, did not. It was a very big hit picture, but uh, it grew and grew and grew and grew. The, uh, if ever romance comes back into all our lives, into society, I think American Paris will have a great resurgence and maybe Sing in the Rain will go down. If you look at the history of other arts, painting, music, there's a 50, 100 years of one and then go down. If you looked around here at SMU, it was with some very bright art, drama, dance, film students and talk to them about, well, let's just say Watteau or uh, David and then what, uh, what, you know. But you say Warhol, and they know right away of whom he was speaking of, Picasso and so forth. A hundred years from now, maybe Warhol and Picasso won't be as important. I wouldn't put Picasso there, but he, uh, he'll always be important, I believe. But there are styles and tastes in history. In the New York Times of last Sunday, they showed some marvelous Karachis, which I had never seen in my life, to be quite honest. And uh, they were beautiful, they were beautiful pictures. And uh, I was amazed. Then there was a cut of edge, you know, this may be, have been the LA Times art section, uh, a pieta, and uh, Jesus was lying back in usual style. But the Virgin Mother was very young, and you could see through her robe, her breasts, as if she were nude, it was a, but it was so beautiful and so touching. And I looked at that, I, I've, I'd never seen that picture. And here it was reproduced in glorious black and white. <laughs> yes? Back to singing in the rain, was the rain sequence a long thought out thing? No, it was very easy to do. And was it, did they just think of it or did they plan to do They was I. <laughs> it was an old song. The song had been done in three other different movies and always was a flop. And we couldn't understand why the producer of the movie, who also wrote the song, wanted it, wanted it in the picture. And um, he asked me what I was going to do with it. And then I said, I'm going to be singing and I'm going to be dancing. It's going to be raining. And uh, it wasn't a hard number. It's not a difficult number for any dancer to do. It's, it's how it's played. It's a scene. It's how it's played. Well, did you know from the start that it was going to be a classic scene? I can't quite understand your accent. Say it clearly. Did you know from the start that it would be a classic scene? No, no. One never knows that. One tries. I think we always believed in musicals as an art form. We were very serious about them. But that doesn't mean you, you hit every time. No, you never have an idea. How many takes are how many uh, takes to do that? Not many. We did the whole number in a day and a half. That's unheard of now, I know. It would take six months. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I say that, that uh, referring back to something, uh, musical comedies, the shooting, constructing for them may be a lost art, uh, co comparatively speaking. Do you remember the budget on that movie? No, but it was, I would guess, it was around um, three million dollars. Was that a lot, or average, or what? For average that, for that average. time. The the advantage of working under the old studio contracts is that we all knew each other. It was repertory theater. We didn't have brains enough to call it that then, but it was repertory theater, and we would be together all the time, and we could think up ideas if we were laid off. We just didn't go off and go uh, water skiing in Hawaii or somewhere. We we. Uh, we uh, might have played around, but we were we were very much interested in our various art forms. So we uh, and we loved them. So we had time to rehearse, we had time to think, and often we helped each other out. I there are many numbers in many MGM pictures that that you will see that I did that had no credit on the screen just to help out a friend who, who was stuck. We were a repertory group, and uh, that was the advantage of it. So when I say that Singing in the Rain took a day and a half to shoot, the young people don't believe it. 
you're going to make it up. So I tell them, go look in the files. It's there. As a matter of fact, I, I had to uh, send them to England because uh, some kind of a challenge came up. So I got to the MGM files and got the schedules out of the cellar and sent them over to London. That was last year sometime. Yes? One of the local channels is showing Living in a Big Way today. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to surprise the students with, with, uh, with uh, one of those numbers, then surprise the Sunday gathering with one of those numbers, because I thought n nobody would ever see that Well, it's picture. not shown very often, and there's a construction team dance, and it's quite incredible. Did you do the stunts for that? Did I do what for? The stunts for the construction team dance? Yeah, there weren't many stunts, but what there are. Well, the, I the ladder. The Letter going back and forth. And well, I did that, yes, and I did the <laughs> parallel bar stuff on the rafters, yes. I, I had to do my own stuff, not because I was brave, but you could tell the difference in body style between a long line and stunt men who are husky. So. With as much as you've done in show business, is there any part of it that you haven't done that you would like to I, I can't think right at the moment. I think I've done just about everything except sweep up after the elephants. <laughs> the, uh, <coughs> understand I learned my business with my brother in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we just worked cheap nightclubs and amateur nights at American Legion halls, and often picked up coins on the floor. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's easy for me to confess at my age that this, this was during Prohibition, and uh, a lot of them, a lot of it was speakeasy entertainment and